Hey, welcome back. So here we are. We are going to determine if Russia or China acts. Last time we played, China went first. Let's see what happens this time. China is six to 10, Russia one to five. I rolled a five, so this time it's gonna be Russia. So already an extremely different game. Um, so let me make sure I didn't miss anything here. The, um, the uh, developer told me to read slowly. So let's move on. Yeah, so now we're on to this phase here. And um, yeah, we're doing this. Russia is for sure gonna be acting. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Russia acted token, if I can find it. So I put it all over here. So Russia acted token, I'm gonna put that there to show that Russia went. So, you know, if you disappear for three days and come back and you wonder, I can't remember who went and did what. That's what that's for. So now I need to find the Russia Axe. And we got this guy here. So we start on this left page. And um, it's basically uh, giving us a whole series of this is what we're going to go through. So this is what I it was exhausted with when we were playing tabletop simulator because I was reading all this to you and it's not that I'm not going to read it here, but man, oh man, it, you can pause your screen. You can, you know, read it at your leisure. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do that's, uh, that I couldn't do for you, uh, with a tabletop. So, um, so the first thing is, is, uh, you have to decide has Russia won the game? So they have to have a base in Europe Nine or more influence, uh, stability in the Eurozone is less than five, or NATO or the UK have relations worse than very close. Uh, all three have to be true. So none of those are true at the moment, as they should be. So um, let's move on. So if Russia has not won the game, uh, did you just draw the Russia Axe Crisis shit? No, we did not. Um, so we're going to skip this. So we're going to do everything below. So first step, is their posture going to change? If currently at posture one, no, they're at posture two. So we're going to skip down to here at the beginning. If currently posture two and the sum of the flip tension counters is zero to one, we got to look at the tension counters. So remember, we got to remove one because of our summit with them. So this is the tension, and they have a tension counter of one. You can see right there. So I think this first one actually applies to us. So if the current posture is two, and the sum of tensions is zero to one, and relations is four or five, no, our relations are two. So we're skipping. Um, This doesn't apply, this doesn't apply, neither does that. None of those apply, so I think they just stay at posture two. Uh, based on the sum of US tension values, so I don't think the posture changes, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, so now we go down to this one. If the sum of the counters is zero one, which it is, place a trending pro US counter on the relation track. Now, we already have one there, so you know what that means by now. So we'll take this counter off. I'll put it up here. And it actually improves to three. They're now neutral. So that's good. Okay. So that part's done. Then it says, then immediately, before you perform any other actions, remove all tension counters and redraw half rounded up. So obviously they had one, so they're going to get one more. So I'm, there's a whole bunch of them to, to choose from. So shake, 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 go in, grab one. And then, of course, make sure you're not looking at it, which, again, I think is near impossible to do. I think that's why they don't put them in a cup. In their suggestion. So 
they got their tension marker back. Okay, um, I don't know how good this is going to behave if I'm folding it, but let's, let's do it this way. All right. I'm going to bring the board closer to me. This reaching across the table thing is for the birds. Okay. <clears throat> After checking for, and if necessary, changing posture, which it did not, then improve their capabilities. So they make two or three. They're going to make three. For each attempt, roll a d10 and subtract one. If there are any sanction counters on them, they do have one. A one to four result at posture one, or a one to five result, which is their posture, equals success, and they will improve a box by one. And we're gonna use the following hierarchy to determine which areas they attempt to improve until you complete it all. All right, so they need to do three of them. <clears throat> areas in which Russia trails the US by two or more. There is one. It's called Recon. So they're going to try that one before once. Attempt to improve each of these areas once until you're out of attempts or all of those areas have been attempted. If there's more than two, determine randomly. Um, yeah, so we're going to do the Recon one. So we're going to go ahead and roll their die. I rolled a nine, which is excellent. They get nothing. And they're going to like it. All right, so that was a fail. So that's one of the three. If you have two or more actions left, attempt to increase both cyber warfare and strategic missile defense. If uh, only one remains, choose. So those are the two they're going to do. So let's do cyber warfare. And remember, since they're at posture two, a one to a five is successful. So let's do cyber warfare first. That's a fail. And then let's do, what's the other one? Missiles. Uh, also a fail. That was an excellent rolling, Russia. Good job. All right, so that is done. They improved nothing, but you know what? We improved nothing either, so uh, turnabout's fair play there. Next, espionage. Uh, after attempting, conduct espionage. If Russia's relations is one or two, then they make two espionage attempts to steal from the U.S., we just moved to three, so we don't get to do any of this. So that's interesting. We avoided a lot of disaster here. So I think we can skip all this. I'm moving to the next page. Improve economy. Do not perform if their economy is at seven. Hey, you're definitely not at seven. Roll a d10. So let's roll a d10. And they rolled a nine. Remember, high numbers are always good for us. Now, there are some DRMs here. If there is a unilateral sanction, they have a multi. So they do get a plus three because they're sanctioned. So that nine becomes a 12. Minus one per Russian influence counter in the Eurozone, Eastern Europe, and or Central South Asia. So those, that's minus three. So those two cancel each other out. And minus one if Russia's relationship with U.S. is five, which it's not. So they basically get a nine. And a nine is place a worsening economy counter on Russia. The Federation Council is not happy. They place extra focus on internal situation and economic inadequacies. Reduce Russia actions by one when calculating number of actions below. So that is funny. So uh, let's see here. So they basically get a minus one AP. And uh, I thought I punched all their stuff, but maybe I didn't. For example, China Summit used. Um, I honestly don't know where the 
Oh, you know what? Those are just a regular, uh, it's just a regular token. That's why. So there's three economy approving tokens left. We have one right now. Um, so this one is economy worsening. And then we have one for the Chinese economy here, which I'm just going to put there. And there's one for Europe, which I'm just going to put over here. Those are the only economies we're, we're tracking in the game. Okay, so um, they get a minus one. I know I put the minus one marker on them, but uh, it's going to come off right away here. So their economy is worsening. And thematically, it just means that they're going to spend an action to improve their internal um, framework. Um, so we have to calculate the number of actions they're actually getting. So current value on their SOE track plus one. They're currently on four. And then they would get plus one, which is five. And then it's modified by the value at the bottom of their relations with US, which right now is zero because they are on the neutral. And um, here I can show you real quick. So these are the numbers they're referring to here. And then of course they're on a four. So four plus one is five minus zero. If they were down here where before we did the summit, they would have gotten another action. So by doing that summit with them, we cooled them off a little bit and they do one less action against us, which is good. Um, <clears throat> it's good to get along with people, folks. <laughs> it's not, you're not always supposed, having enemies is not always a good thing. I know people like to vilify but you know what? If we can get along, everybody's better. Uh, okay, so then it says modify by plus or minus AP. So now we got to do minus one, so they get four actions. And then we remove those counters from the map. If we rolled a nine or more on the subtract one, yeah, that's just saying, reminding you. So yeah, we got a minus one. I put the counter out there, but. Uh, you know, they're saying I didn't need to do that. That's all good. The counter's gone now, so they're going to get four actions. So, first one up. It's dependent actions. Perform each action listed below once in order until all actions have been used. So let's go. Terror in Central South Asia. If there's five total terror groups combination of values. So South Asia has three. See the terror groups? There's a one and a two there. So they are, they're at three. So this is not true. Quail rising internal descent. Uh, roll d10 and add one if posture is two. Uh, we rolled a one and we add one. That's two. Use one Russia action to allocate the human and financial capital needed to address political, social, infrastructure costs. Uh, monitoring company. In effect, Russia loses an action that could have been used elsewhere. Oh, that was excellent. <clears throat> that was excellent. So they're gone. Um, if Russia is at war, they aren't. So one of the four actions is used. If you're a new player, it's your one of the games, skip this action. Well, it's your one, so we're skipping this action. Um, yes, that's all part of number four. Okay, now we're done with the dependent actions. <clears throat> if we have actions left, do as many much of the remaining action hierarchy as you can. So that's this section. So you have to do in order. We have three actions left. <clears throat> so first one, cyber attacks. <clears throat> Make two attacks using the chart to the right if at posture one or three attacks if at posture two. They're at posture two. 
Um, so table to the right would be this. Determine target. So let's, who are they attacking? I rolled a 10. So they're targeting the US economy. Um, success places, well, here we go. These are the, this is the thing. So they're going to, so we have to roll to see if they succeed now. Yes, roll attack using the applicable roll. So there's success and there's major success. Okay, so let's hope. So they rolled a one, which is a major success if their capability is greater than ours, which it is. So they just got a major success. That's not good. Major success decreases the state of the economy by one box and increased domestic crisis by one. So they just meddled with us hard. <clears throat> they convinced CNN that Russian collusion was real. That's what they just did. All right, so then that drops to five. So we drop by a whole box. Okay, they're doing it three times, so now we're gonna determine their next target. Their next target, they rolled a three. Um, oh, hold on. This is if they rolled a one. It's targeting the US economy. What did I roll? Did I really roll one? I rolled a one for this. I think I rolled a 10. They didn't attack the US economy, folks. All right, I'm gonna revert that. They attacked 10, which is Eastern Europe democracies. So they add two Russian influence counters in Eastern Europe and increase regional crisis by one. So that's what they did. I don't know if that's any better, to be honest with you. Regional crisis goes up by one. Two more influence counters go on. They now have three of them there. Okay, now we rolled a three. They're targeting US political cohesion. So they rolled a four this time and they have a success. <clears throat> so they are, it decreases relations with Congress by one box and bipartisan cooperation by one box. So that's the reason why we wanted to improve it. So they made it so we can't even pass bills and our relation with Congress drops. All right. that blows. I think that hurts more than the economy hurts. <laughs> okay, and then their third target is a 10, which again is the Eastern Bloc. They rolled a five this time, which is a success. It's not a major success. Adds a Russian influence counter in Eastern Europe. So... They really went after Eastern Europe hard. And they now have four influence counters there, which is not good at all. All right, so that was two actions for them. The cyber war thing stinks. That's why we need to get our cyber war tech up. Um, if you still have actions remaining, proceed to the next action. Okay, next one. Multi-domain, low-intensity gray zone attacks to expand Russia's influence in neighboring regions. All right. If any regions have three or more Russian influence, create a Russia base. That would be Eastern Europe. In any one region where there's currently three or more, Remove the three counters and replace them with a Russia base. Immediately decrease the relations with Congress track by one box and public approval by two. So I'm dropping public approval by two right now. We're down to 46. And a trenching anti-U.S. counter on the relations for Russia's relations with the U.S. Boy, Russia, you really like to 
They don't believe in having friends. So now we're trending down, downwards. Congress goes down by one. And then I gotta grab a base marker. So a Russian base goes here and one, two, three influence markers come off the board. Uh, they just don't like Ukraine. All right, so now we have one action left. So we still have actions remaining. Compromise to facilitate removal of sanctions. They do have sanctions. If Russia's relations is four or five, nope. If any sanctions are currently on Russia, roll a d10. 10. There's a lot of DRMs here. Uh, minus one if posture is two, so that becomes a nine. Minus two if there are two or more, nope, stays at nine. Russia NATO track. I'm just peeking. They are not on the plus two. So no. Eastern Europe stability is six or higher. Nope, it's on five. Eurozone stability is seven or higher. Nope, it's on six. Uh, we are tied with them on this. Nope. If this is the last Russian action available, yes. So that plus one puts it back to a 10. And then there is a multilateral sanction, so that makes it a 12. So they stay at the nine plus here. The West End firms and Russia blinks. If Russian posture is currently posture two, decrease the posture one, remove all sanctions. Yeah, so sanctions gonna go away and their posture drops to one, which does help. Okay, that concludes Russia's actions. They just did four. They have exploit, militarize the Arctic, reinforce allies, assist in a nuclear program for Iran, the Korean missile program, prepare for war, Middle East influence. They got all kinds of not fun things in there. So, uh, whew, that is a, a doozy going through all those. Um, but we did it. So now what's interesting is they do that and then we go down to any three actions. So now we get to take a turn, three turns in fact. And um, basically we get to counter whatever they were doing. Like for example, they caused our uh, bipartisan cooperation to drop and our relationship with Congress to drop. So, um, now I get to do three actions, and one of them is, is I need to get the bipartisan back up because we need to be able to pass bills. So we're gonna be doing a domestic action. Um, I'm just making sure that's really what I wanna do. Yes, we're gonna do a domestic action. We're gonna encourage bipartisanship in Congress. So it's going to cost us one AP to do. So we're dropping down to 13. And this is one of our three actions. We're going to roll a D6 and hope we get a two or a less. Um, we do not have this. I rolled a five. That is not good. So no effect. Um, now I could spend a AP, which I will, to reroll. Now I rolled a one. It worked. So, boom, 
we move up and now we're on back in the we can do one bill in Congress. So bipartisanship has improved. <clears throat> All right. Um, that was one of our three. I know our relationship with Congress is below four or at four. I could try to improve that. I don't know if I want to. I think. Um, is there anything I could do about those Russian bases? Holy crap. That that one is. Uh, see, to remove influence. You gotta have an alignment of seven or eight. Jeez. Um, I don't think there's much I can do to help with that. I can try to do another trade agreement. Uh, part of me wants to do a summit with China because China is yet to go. So here's my thing. We can react to what Russia just did to us, which I think is a losing strategy because you're always playing catch up. Whereas my attitude is, is okay, Russia is already gone, so we've seen the worst they can do, but China is still yet to go, so we need to prepare for China. Um, now, I did need to react to the bipartisan cooperation because that was the biggest hit we took. The relationship with Congress did go down, but I'm not going to try to bring that back up because that's just basically I'm spending actions to reverse their actions, which gives me a net yield of zero. So what can I do to get, for example, get ahead of China? Like I want to remove that influence marker in Asia and Pacific. We have an alignment of seven there. So let's do that for action two. We're going to do a diplomatic. Let's remove a Chinese influence counter in there. So we're going to choose a region with alignment of 7 or 8. They have a 7. On a d6, you may remove. If I get a 1 to a 6, I could remove one Russia or Chinese influence counter from that region. So let's, let's go for it. I rolled an 8. So I'm going to spend an action point. I know I'm blowing through my action points again. But I rolled a 7, and that still didn't do it for me. So I'm going to use my third action to do it again. I think there might be other actions I should be doing, but uh, I am going to do it again. So there's my six. I want to get rid of their influence completely. So done. All right, so I forgot to do this. China goes down by one, and Russia goes up by one, two, three. Because that base counts as three influence. So, uh, not good. Russia just needs to get to nine to win. <clears throat> okay, um, that was my three actions. Uh, the only thing I did was aggressively go after the Chinese influence, and I don't know. I mean, we'll see. So, next up, uh, we get to draw a chit from here. So this is our, um, whoa, I almost dropped them. That would have been a disaster. All right. Again, I'm not looking. Oh my gosh, we got the only good one. <laughs> all right, so putting out all those back in. Good times. So... What do I do for good times? Um, so I put it on the board here because it doesn't go back in the box in the chit. So the next time I draw, it's definitely not going to be good times. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a chart for this. Just give me a second. So for example, we have our world charts. So here's the cyber attacks that they did. Um, is that the same? Oh, those are rogue states. Okay. 
Interesting. All right, we got Russia went. Domestic charts. Good times, right there. D15. And, uh... Just remember... We could have spent two APs to do an additional action. We could have gotten an AP back if we don't do an action. And we are technically here. We drew a chip. So there's all kinds of stuff here. And we drew the good times one. So let's roll a D10 and look at the table. It's good to be the president. <laughs> all right, good times. It's 18. I'm never going to draw this again. All right, here it is. Good times. <clears throat> okay. So it looks like I'm rolling a D10. I rolled a 7. We wanted lower numbers, right? Um, host UN leaders at White House dinner and concert. The White House chef prepares an amazing gourmet meal featuring an entree of Columbia River poached salmon. Then an A-list of current pop and country stars rock the house in a two-hour concert. This is when Hart did uh, Stairway to Heaven. Fiance closes the show, but why would you invite her? With soaring vocals and an inspiring performance of a newest song and music video, All of Us. Shows stark images of worldwide poverty, war, and oppression. Calls out political leaders to do more to ease suffering in this world. In the awestruck audience, tears flow freely. Those are fake. Responsibilities are recognized. That's pretend. And promises are made to be broken. Gain one UN goodwill counter. I don't think I get to look at it. So here's my counter. And that goes over here under... Goodwill earned. And what else? Make two immediate free UN humanitarian aid rolls for two regions of your choice. Roll a D10. One to eight is success plus one public approval. All right, so public approval is easy. I can do that one. We're up to 48%. Um, two free human humanitarian aid rolls. What does it mean? Um, this is domestic, so I don't think humanitarian aid would be on here. I'm looking at the world chart. There's UN sanctions, raid and drone strikes, I don't see humanitarian aid. This might get to what I was talking about, though. You, like, the humanitarian aid thing was something I wanted to do. All right, so let's go here. <clears throat> I know what I need to roll for humanitarian aid, but what does it do? Like, if I succeed, I pass. Uh, so we're looking at the world arena here. I don't see anything there. Diplomatic, UN actions, page 36. Ah, uh, you know what, I bet it's because it's, there's a UN uh, section in the, uh, give me a second. We have right here, ally and rogue states. I bet there's a, a UN section in here. Like there's NATO. Right here, UK, Australia, Israel, India, and Rogue, Canada, Gulf States, Rogue. Yeah, none of them are UN. Well, so much for that. So let's go to here, UN Actions, page 36. Let's see what that says. All right, um... In activation phases two and four, during the turn sequence, the United Nations will act. 
Where? Oh, in activation two and four. I do see that. Okay, I do see it. WD3 in the World Charts booklet. That's what we need to look at. How did I miss this? So WD3, oh, because it's called UN Actions. So these are US initiated ones. Right here, UN Action part, Chart. Humanitarian aid, decreased regional crisis uh, by one. So this says I need a one to eight, but I think the, the thing we just read, um, it was a good times chart, <clears throat> which I've already lost. Because there's too many books, folks. <laughs> there's just too many. So I think it's the, that's the world charts domestic. Good times. Page 18. I think it said one to six. So we know that it's going to reduce the crisis level by one. Nope, one day, just like the other thing said. <clears throat> so we can um, reduce crisis of two areas by one. All right, let's do this. Um, I'm going to choose the Middle East, get it down to zero. That's a five, so that goes down to zero. And then I'm going to choose Africa, which is at three. And, of course, I roll a nine, which failed. Um... Yeah, the Africa one actually was the higher priority, but that's okay. There's, I can't win it all. <clears throat> Next, we, if there's a plus, draw again. And see, there was a plus on this. So because there's a plus here, I have to draw another chip. So good times isn't always good times. No matter what, we're doing something bad. I would have rather just drew something bad. And All right, here we go. Plus one random regional crisis. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just what it says. Roll a d10 to determine which region. Once it's identified, move the crisis level one box to the right. Yeah. So let's roll. I rolled a four. <clears throat> so we didn't want an eight or a nine. A four is the Middle East. So we just made the crisis go right back up. And then notice it has a plus sign, so that means we draw another one. So this goes here, and then we go draw again. Cascading event. Uh, let's see. Shuffle all the cards in the two deck, then randomly draw one and apply the cascading event. <clears throat> okay, so there's two of them there. So I'm just going to roll a die. One to three means the one on top, and three to six is the one on the bottom. So we're going to grab the one on the bottom. One sec while I stand up here, reach across my table. Oh. Oh. So the one on bottom is this one, is the Iranian one. So it just uh, escalated. If there is an unstable state in the Middle East, there is. Flip it to civil war. <clears throat> so we take this guy and we flip it over. There is now a second civil war going in the Middle East. Increase one level one or two terror group by one level. Um, they have, so 
do the level one and turn it into a two. So they got four level two terror groups now. <clears throat> Place two tension counters on Iran and Saudi Arabia. Increase U.S.-Iran conflict track by one box. So U.S. and Iran is this one. So the conflict goes to two. Two more tension counters on Iran. Now that's the part that that's going to be tough. So I'm drawing two more. And you can see they got quite a few going on for them. And then uh, it looks like we need to do two more. All right. So these go on Saudi Arabia. So they got themselves quite the nice stack. Um, so then this is going to, we resolve two, and now it's going to go to the three. So from a cascade perspective, that two goes to three. And this chit, it has a two on the top left, which means that it's a cascade two. So if we drew that again, that would not resolve, it would resolve the other card, but the one that's in the cascade three would not happen. So the Middle East is definitely flaring up, no matter how hard we try. Okay, so now our marker is moving to Ally Rogue Group X, and then we'll be able to do a uh, focus. So we shuffled these, and we're just going to draw the leftmost one. And it is Group A again, which is what we drew last time. So we're familiar with this group. And this group is a mixture of both good and bad actors. If I can use the term I always hear on the... And uh, we are down here now. So we got to do uh, WA1 through WA4. So this is um, getting into... There's a chart here called the Ally and Rogue States. So we take this, we open it up, and... Group A, right here is what you're looking for. So the EU, NATO, uh, ROC, which is South um, South Korea, and Iran. All of them are activating. Iran is the big one that I'm concerned about, but the other ones should be able to help us a bit. And this can be a very lengthy turn. So um, these allies act only in their region, except for NATO, who can affect Eurozone or Eastern Europe. So, um, first we're going to perform, when it is this allies group turn to act, perform European Union procedure to update economic trends. So, world economic trend, roll a d10. So, that's this one. I rolled a four. So, it says on a one to four, uh, place economy improving counter on all four tracks. So, in our track, we get an improving economy. Uh, for China, improving. For Russia, they lose the worsening. And then over here, uh, they get improving for Europe. I do, if the designer is still possibly watching, I do love the fact that he shows how everything's linked together. And it's, you know, it's not just you know, bang the bad guys and help the good guys. I mean, as much as we're rivals with other countries, we're still, our economy is tied to theirs. And I don't know, it's like some of these actions are stupid. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, well done. Okay, so we did world economic. Now we're going to roll for Eurozone. So we got to do this. So let's just roll and see what happens. I rolled a nine, which is not good for us. Four to five, economic summit strengthens Eurozone. Place economy improving, counter on Eurozone SOE track. If it's already seven, then increase stability by one instead. Um, well, no, that's four to five, but we rolled a nine. 
EU Discord, plus one to their regional crisis. So they go to two. Okay, activate NATO. So they get two joint actions. I don't think they have a minus one AP. They do not. So... They have no tension markers. Okay, so first thing we gotta do is, so there's this NATO unilateral action table. They're saying make a D10 check, refer to the action table, applying act the DRMs, and apply the result. Then remove all the tension counters and replace with half rounded up. There are no tension counters, so we don't have to worry about that. A nine is worse than a one. So we rolled a nine, unfortunately. Uh, minus one, which makes it an eight. That's good, because this was bad. Actually, that would have helped us get two troops, but that's okay. That turns into an eight. Uh, plus one per tension value on NATO, nothing. Current conflict status value on Russia, NATO conflict track. So that's this over here. So Russia, NATO is that track right there. And that says uh, plus the current conflict status value, which is two. So we actually add two to that. So that eight becomes a 10. <clears throat> and plus one for every war, current war, including U.S. forces. So then it becomes an 11. So now we're at stand up against Russia. And so we got a roll. And we got a four. So one to six, compromise. Minus one to the Russia-NATO conflict track. Or remove one Russia influence in Eurozone or Eastern Europe. So I want to remove Russian influence because that's really hard to remove. Um, so we're going to remove the one from Eastern Europe. They have four of them there. All right, that wasn't a horrible outcome, but that's how NATO helps us, right? So the uh, U.S. doesn't have to do it all alone. The in United Kingdom and Germany and, and uh, Freedom Fries, they all stepped in and Put a little bit of pressure on Russia and reduce their influence. So thank you. And you know what really saved the day? It was Poland because they're, you know, they're they're arming up because uh, Russia and Ukraine, and Poland's letting Russia know, hey, you're not messing with us. So Poland for the win. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so then you could see there's. South Korea as well. So we did this. Then we remove all their tension counters. They didn't have any. So now we keep going. So now we're activating South Korea and follow the exact same procedures in two except for South Korea. So we're doing this again. So um, South Korea is here. They do have tension markers on them, one. And so let's see here. They're going to get two actions because we're very close with them. I'm verifying. Yes, we're very close. They're going to get two actions. Oh, hold on. NATO gets two actions. Where's the joint actions? I completely skipped that spot with the joint actions. Give me a second. Right here, possible joint actions. So NATO gets two, and this is gonna be in their region. So we get to choose. Oh, and this was supposed to be before we did the unilateral action. So um, I don't think it's gonna matter the, that we're doing this a little out of order, but let's catch up right now. Let's finish up NATO, 
we get to do two actions. So we can do an intel, locate a terror group. They don't have any. Raid, nope. Stabilize a region. Reinforce. Deescalate. So we can try to remove, like, reduce their conflict track. Um, request humanitarian aid. To decrease regional crisis. So let's do that. We're going to do that one because they're at two. And I rolled an eight, which does reduce them by one. So good job, NATO. And then let's see, remove stress. Remove up to two tensions from the ally. And that's it. So we got to do another action. So we can try to do humanitarian aid again. Oh, it says one max. Oh, it says any region. So yeah, let's do humanitarian aid somewhere else. So let's do Africa, for example. And there's a two. So we got that three reduced back down to a two. All right. I think that was a good use of their two actions. Um, now we go to South Korea. So again, we're very close, so we get two joint actions with South Korea. Let's do that now. Um, one of the ones we should do is remove tension markers. So uh, Intel would let us move something into the Intel track, which is always good. Stabilize, always good. Reinforce, never horrible. De-escalate. Remove stress. Remove up to two tensions from this alley. They have one. I'm going to spend one to remove it anyways, uh, just because it's nice to have zero. So that was a plus one. We're going to make sure they have a nothing. So we'll get that gone. Then for the other one, the stability in this region is six. It's pretty high. Um... There are terror groups, though, so I think what I want to try to do is we could do humanitarian aid because there's crises going on everywhere. But I think I want to try to do intel. So it's an auto success. Locate any terror group in the region. Place it in the gather intel box. And so we have a level two terror group here, and we're going to move them up to the gathering. So we're gathering information about them now. And then uh, eventually we'll be able to, to raid them and destroy them. Okay, now we're going to roll against the unilateral table. So they rolled a six. And this is just like NATO, except they have their own table over here. So um, we rolled a six. Uh, minus one if no tensions, because we just remove. So that becomes a five. Uh... North Korea has one tension, so nothing. And then the conflict value between North and South Korea is, I'm looking off camera here, it's a two. So plus half, which is one. So basically it's a six. So this says increase regional trade, remove one China or Russia influence marker from Asia PAC. If none, place trending pro US. Oh my gosh, so we removed we removed China, which means there's none. So we get to do a trending pro US. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, I gotta go punch another token here. Gonna just punch all of them. So we have trending US counters we're just gonna put here. But this trending pro-US goes there, which means that they're almost up to an eight now because the China influence was gone. All right, so that was really cool. I like, I do like this, how these, uh, these little groups are sort of acting on their own and sometimes they help us and sometimes they don't, just like in real life. I mean, you have friends that make good choices that you agree with and friends that you don't. All right, so we did all that. We uh, then remove all of their tension counters. It's not NATO, of course. After NATO and ROC, activate Iran. Now, this is the part that I'm nervous about. 
Flip over any tension and sanction counters on Iran and sum their values. So Iran has a boatload. So we're going to put them here just because I don't want to reach up there. They have no effect. Plus one, plus two, plus one, and plus one. So two, three, four. They have five points worth of tension. Uh, so roll a d10 and refer to Iran's action chart, applying all listed DRMs. Seven. Okay, so their action part chart is on the next page. The DRMs, let's go to the DRM. This is definitely not true. So they have five, so seven plus five makes it a 12. I don't know what this dark blue means. I'm assuming dark blue is bad. <laughs> So they're in the, the dark blue range. They're at 12. Uh, Israel's not at war. Is the alignment currently six or higher? No, it's not. And is Iran at war with Israel? No. So they made it to 12. Blue results. If the result falls within a blue area, roll a 7 to 14. Add plus 1 to Iran's nuke missile track and decrease APs by the number listed on the missile track. Also place an Iran influence counter in the Middle East. You jerks. Okay. All right, so they're at 12. Let's resolve 12 first. Launch proxy air land war in the Middle East. Roll a D10. I rolled a five. So Hezbollah versus Israel. So they are, there is a war. It's happening. Oh boy, this is adding a lot more stress for me. So, it's a Hezbollah war. So we got this Hezbollah at war thing. And uh, so basically it's going on to the war track. Here, as the attacker. And Israel is the defender. And then I don't know what their conflict status is. We'll get to that in a second. But I need a conflict type marker. So they said it was a proxy. I don't know what a proxy means either. So, uh, so many things I don't know. So we gotta do all this before we, uh, here, before I forget, we're gonna do what it told us to do. The missile track goes up one, two, three, and see it says minus one presidential APs right here. And so we lose one action point. And then it says uh, plus one tensions on Iran, Israel, and so one more tension on Iran, Israel, and Saudi Arabia. I'm taking care of that before I resolve this war thing, because the war thing is going to take me minutes and minutes to figure out. And <laughs> I'm going to forget about the fact that their missile thing went up. So let me resolve one thing at a time here. So move it up by one, decrease APs. Also place an Iran influence counter in the Middle East. Um, so here's an Iran influence, goes in the Middle East. Um, I actually don't know if we're supposed to put the tensions on yet because it didn't say to do that, so I'm gonna take that off for now. And we'll put those on if it tells us to. Now, uh, a couple of things. I gotta look up the war, because there is a, a spot in the uh, governing manual on when you get a war, what you're supposed to do. And then also, um, 
It's telling us to look on page 33. So first things first, Iran influence. We're gonna do the war next. I just wanna resolve and finish this first. Okay, when a gamer chart tells you to place an influence marker, if there is no marker, place a counter there. If there is a civil war or civil war ceasefire in the Middle East that doesn't already have an Iranian influence counter beneath it, place it there with priority to civil war. So that Iranian influence is gonna go on one of the civil wars. Okay, done. Um, so the, in, the effects. If it's next to Israel, it causes a DRM to their unilateral role. If it's beneath civil wars, causes a DRM to the Civil War Resolution. Okay, that's fair enough. <clears throat> so we got that resolved. So now we're going to go to the war section. Right here. Wars are set up. Let me read this thing one more time. It says, launch a proxy and air land war. in the Middle East, Hezbollah versus Israel. It says, see war process chart, WM5. Ooh, so that's an actual, so this is the governing manual on how to set up a generic, blah, generic war. <clears throat> this is telling us to go to WM5, which is the world chart. And again, there's just too many uh, if there's any gripe with this, there's just too many charts sometimes. Like, I can't find all my stuff. So it's saying WM5, War Progress, 15. Uh, here we go, WM5. What you do when a war starts and during war progress activation segments. All wars. Place a conflict type. And uh, it's a proxy air land. So we come over here. So we got air ground right, right there. So I'm going to put that as the conflict type. Place a conflict counter on the stalemate box. So, okay, that's done. Place a country at war counter showing the name of each side. Attacker blue, defender red. Uh, all right, so that part is all squared away. And then we're going to This is war number two. Uh, war number two is Hezbollah and Iran. So I mean, war number two is there. I guess it's uh, Israel. So I put that over Israel like that to show that Israel's at war. All right, um, still reading. So the next thing it says, and it's a whole bunch of stuff, folks. Place a number representing the strength of the attacker and defender, blah, blah, blah. Use the following table. If there's a conflict track that governs this war, Adjust initial strengths by the combat relative strengths. Uh, there's Saudi Arabia and Iran, U.S. Iran, Israel and Iran, Israel and neighbors. So Hezbollah would be considered Israel and neighbors, I would think. That's an interesting one. I mean, what does neighbors mean? Um, hmm. When this track reaches war status, 
Roll to ten to determine who is at war. Okay. Sorry. I'm looking at the board here. And the part I'm looking at is right here. So see that has a four star? That is the Israel Neighbors, which I'm pointing to right here. There's a thing called Israel Neighbors. And it says when it reaches four, you roll a d10, and it could be Israel versus Hezbollah. And Hamas, and Israel versus Hezbollah. So that's actually what's happening, is Israel versus Hezbollah. So this here... Relative strength is plus two Israel. So Israel is going to have plus two strength compared to them. That's what that's trying to say. Boy, that was a lot. But yes. Okay. So then we roll for the strength table. So let's roll. And I forgot. This is my first roll. This is for... Uh, sure. Let's make that Israel. So for Israel... Well, actually, there's nothing to roll. It's just a table. So we're looking at um, Israel. It's an eight. It's a six if it's air, missile, or naval, which it's not. It's a uh, air, land. So, so they have eight strength. So now I'm going to take my thing. I punch a number eight. And we're going to put that on Israel's strength. And actually, Israel's at 10, because we, we just determined they're at plus 2. So we're going to grab a 10 and put that on for defensive forces. So I just laid the 8 over there next to it. But see, there's a 10 for their defensive forces. And then for the Hezbollah, it's a 3. So typical Middle East. Everybody's messing with Israel. They say that the Bible's not real, but yet the Bible says that they're going to always go to war with Israel. And guess what they do? They always go to war with Israel, just like this unreal Bible tells them they will. It's like, all you have to do, if you want to prove to the world that the Bible's not real, and that it's just a book of fiction, is just don't go to war with a country the size of, what, New Jersey. <laughs> just be happy. With what you have. Don't go to war with a country the size of New Jersey. And no matter how much people insist that it's a book of fiction, they still do exactly what the book tells them that they'll do. <laughs> it's, it's insanity. Or maybe the book's not fiction. Okay, so um, getting back to this now. This WM5 thing is about... Um, determining who wins and all that stuff, that's resolving the war. And I don't think we need to do that. I think we're just setting up the war, which was this. And by the way, if you're determining strength of the U.S., you would use this right here. So um, I think our goal here is just to set up the war and see when a war starts and during war progress activation segments. So... Whenever that activation occurs, I'm assuming it's just later in the turn here, uh, we will go through and determine odds and determine DRMs and all that stuff and actually try to progress the war to whatever conclusion it's going to um, to get to. So we're going to leave that be. And, um, yeah, we uh, I think that's what I'm supposed to do. If If somebody disagrees, please let me know. It's not super clear. I'm just trying to apply some common sense here. <clears throat> okay, so that was Iran. Now, technically, we're not done with Iran. So we come back, and we just did the action chart. Uh, we applied the results. Remove all tension counters. Replace with half rounded up. So we're removing... One, two, three, four, five. We're going to replace with one, two, three. Because that's half rounded up. And so that means they're going to get three more tension counters. And we can always remove tension, right? We could use our, our actions to do that. Um...
remove all sanctions. Yeah, we're done. Then check on stable states to finish this segment. So I don't know what that means, check on stable states. So let's go to the end of the book. So if Iran is at war, they're not. After rolling for Iran, roll D10, once for each unstable state counter in Central America and South America. So they both have one. So let's do Central America first. I rolled a two. Uh, remove the unstable state. So that's good. Central America no longer has an unstable state. And then we're gonna do the one in South America. I rolled a seven. Uh, keep it as it is. Oh, if stability is less than five, they get to add plus one, which is true. Minus one, two, or three, if regional stability is six, seven, or eight. So for Central America, they would have added one, but a two plus one is three. So still would have removed. We just rolled a seven. Stability is five. Yeah, seven just stays the way it is. Okay, so we finally finished their turn. It, this gets pretty involved, folks. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So now we do our POTUS cabinet focus. This is the fun part. And my dog is on my cord, so give me a second. So we're doing this right here. So I'm just gonna start at the top. This one is a success on a one or a two. So I rolled a four. So this does not happen. So I'm gonna, I don't know. We'll just put it over here or up there. So this one succeeds on a one to five. Of course I roll a six. Come on. Oh. I'm just reading to see if I can spend an action point. We failed. Next one, I need a one. And of course I roll a one. <laughs> All right, so what this says is we decrease one terror group in the US by one level. There's nobody in the US. If none, plus one to Homeland Security and minus two public approval. So Homeland Security is up to seven. And we go one, two down. So not a very popular move, but we are more secure. Uh, okay, next one. I rolled a six, so not happening. Next one, I rolled a five, not happening. And I rolled a two. We do improve cabinet effectiveness. So I roll a d6. I rolled a three. Place an improving marker. So we already have an improving marker, so this becomes a five for effectiveness. So that was really good, that part. We missed a whole bunch of these, but hey, it is what it is. Why you dice, you live by the dice, you die by the dice, right? Uh, that one, the dice went miraculously against us and for us in some strange ways, but well, it is what it is, all right. We are finished with this. So now we move to here. Minus one media relations and two domestic actions and legislative segment. So I think this is where I quit last time. And I understand why, because I'm exhausted myself right now. <laughs> but uh, we are here. We took care of the POTUS cabinet focus. And uh, we just did all this stuff. And now we're on here. Uh, media relations just drops by one, uh, whether we like it or not. So that goes down to a four. And then we go to here, perform two domestic actions, any two I'd like. And um, the important thing to note here is we're getting ready to do the legislative section. So if I want to like pass a bill or propose a bill, now's the time, right? Because I uh, 
if I don't have any cooperation and bipartisan cooperation, I may want to spend an action on that, for example. Um, or I can just try to get some action points back because I'm down to 10. I don't know. I, I actually think I, uh, I don't know. I don't like the idea of going, just getting action points back. Um, so I'm going to forego one of my actions to get a frag in a friendly action segment to recover one AP. Uh, so, domestic actions. Let's take a look at them. We can do party fundraising. We can track terror. Uh, remove attention. And we don't have any, this. This and this don't apply. We have, we already did this once. There's only one opponent in there. We can try to encourage bipartisanship again. Um, improve relations with Congress might be important because we dropped a couple notches. Uh, domestic crisis is at one. We can try to stimulate the economy since we failed before. Um, We do have the uh, awesome treasury secretary, so we do get a minus one for doing that action. And it's one of my focus too, isn't it? No, it's not. Improve the economy is not one of my focus. Uh, um. I think I want to improve relations with Congress. So it's gonna cost me one action. I'm not gonna take the DRM. We do not control both houses of Congress. Got a roll of D6, which I can't find for some reason. Oh, it's up here. Lower is always better, so that two is probably a good roll. Uh, if I would have gotten a one or, well, hold on. If I got gotten a one or less, I get to draw and place a new friend. And get a plus one. Oh, that's pretty cool. So here we go. Minus one if relations in Congress is number one cabinet focus. No, it's not. Minus one if you have respected by Congress. Um, I do have that. I have respected by Congress and likable. So I do get a minus one. So that two becomes a one. And I did not spend an AP. Plus one. If I'm at four or five, I am. So it becomes a two again. So I'm back to a two. So I just get a plus one to the RWC track. So that puts me up to a five. So I can do that again. Or I can try to do bipartisan. This is actually a cool action. This is how we get our friends out there. Um, I'm actually going to go with the guarantee. We're going to improve our party relations and get up to eight. Because that's maximum level. I think that's going to get me points towards winning the game here. And we can focus on Congress and all that other stuff later. Um, okay. So now we move to the next step here, which is legislative segment, which this is the part where I quit, because look at this. Read, 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 read. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. Oh my goodness. Um, so let me pause. I need to, I don't want to read this in front of you. Let me take a chance to read this on my own, get a drink, grab some sanity, and I'll be right back. Okay, I started reading this, and it's not as bad as it looks. So, step one. Uh, if no pending bills, skip this step. Step two. If no pending bills, skip this step. Step three. To attempt to pass a bill. Oh, that's part of step two. Sign or veto bills. If no bills are passed, skip this step. Step four. This is the first time we do something. If you pass or sign a landmark bill only, add a new congressional friend. Um, 
or an opponent if it was the opponent's legislation. So we didn't do anything there. Um, so step five, how the sausage is made. Roll a d6 and refer to the Congressional Maneuvering and Drama Table in the Domestic Chart Booklet. Apply result. Make an additional roll if the bipartisan cooperation is in the leftmost box. So I'm gonna roll a d6. Lower is always better. We got a four. All right, so this thing is in the uh, Congressional Maneuvering and Drama Table. I'm assuming that's a domestic chart. Page seven. All right. So we rolled a four. During step five of each legislative segment, oh, there's DRMs. What's the DRM for this? Oh, it's on the other page. Oh, come on. All right, so there's DRMs to this. We rolled a four. Uh, it's not rightmost. It's in either the left two, so it gets a plus one, so it's at a five. We're not at seven or greater. We're not at three or less. We're not at 60%. We're not less than 30%. Minus one if our friends outnumber opponents, which it does. So that puts us back to a four. And then plus two if this is second roll, which it's not. So we rolled a four. So we come back over to the previous page. Here's a four, a special interest mount media campaign against your bill. See, we don't have any bills. I think we skipped this. There's no bills currently being presented. Like this whole thing sucks, the order of this. So then next one is introduce new bills. So now we go to six, I guess, because even though these other ones say to do it, it should say skip if there's no bills present. So uh, it's just a bunch of malarkey. We went through all that for nothing. Six, introduce new bills. Remove all bills in that cannot be passed box. Yeah, 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 yeah. We now may voluntarily remove blah, blah, blah. Number of bills that are now introduced. If you control both houses, you choose which bills to introduce. If your con opponents control both, choose opponents' legislation for the bills that are the highest public priorities. If control is split, roll a d6 to see who gets to choose. Even as me, odd opponents. Then alternate between parties until a number of attempts. There's only one, folks, so I need to roll an even here. Let's go. No. <laughs> All right, but we rolled an odd, which this part is good. Remember, we made our top priority the public's top priority. So welfare reform is what they're going to proposed legislation for. So I just got to go in here and find uh, welfare reform. Right here. So they're proposing welfare reform. And I don't know where it goes on the chart here. It says uh, place newly introduced bill in the zero box if it's split control. So that's where it goes, right there. All right, done. We finally got a bill uh, proposed. Uh, total, then compare 
the media readings of all friends and opponents. Then move public approval that number of boxes with a max of three boxes. In your favor, if friends net is higher and against you, if opponents net is higher. Tie equals no change is the max of plus or minus three boxes, four against player. Also adjust media relations by one box higher, four or lower against. All right, so what I think they're trying to say is these are our friends. And the only number that's written, oh, right there, a media one. Oh, that's the media result. Total then compare the media ratings. So this one has a media one. So we have a media person on our side and we should have gotten rid of the other guy because they also have a media one. See that? We should have gotten rid of him because uh, he has the media one. Ah, I did not understand that. The one we got rid of was Estelle Lamb, see? She didn't have a media one or anything on her. I thought that number on the top right is what was gonna matter. And it does not. Okay, I paused it and very made sure I did it correct. Those little numbers that are on there, um, these numbers up here are used for passing bills. So that's the media and that's for passing. So we did it correctly. Um, that's the media result. So there's no public approval or anything really that happens because we tied. No change. Scandal investigations. There's no scandal, so we can skip. And then adjust bipartisan cooperation. Examine all friends and opponents. If there are more moderates than radicals, move it right by one box. If there's more radicals than moderates, move it left. So unfortunately, we have two radicals and one moderate. So um, this chart or this table that's really impossible. Um, so we got gridlock again in uh, Congress because everybody's a radical. All right. Then there's legislative momentum. Perform one immediate free action of any type for each of your not opponents' bills that were passed and signed during this activation segment. You also get an immediate free action if you confirmed Supreme Court justice or passed a greater society bill. I have not done any of those things. So we are done with that step. So I'm assuming there's going to be, uh, yeah, see there's a legislative segment here later in the year. So we proposed a bill, then later in the year we can see if we pass it, I guess. So now we're going to draw a chit. And this one does not have the plus signs on it. Um, we gook Russia acts. Oh my gosh. That's that's a mile long. That's a mile long action. <laughs> uh, I need more. More something. All right. Uh, I'm exhausted. Okay, so Russia X. Go to the, oh, hold on. If Russia's no longer in posture two, does it come back? Let's see, look. Only added to the crisis when Russia moves to posture two. But see, now it moved back to posture one, so does that mean that it wouldn't be there? Now it does say you only get to do the two actions, cyber attacks and then um, a random action. Um, or once you get the posture two, it's just there forever. I, I don't know. Or it clears up because now it, we were at posture two at the beginning of the year, so it went into the cup. And now that it's been out, when we do the cleanup at the end of the year, maybe it just won't go back in the cup. And there's so many things I don't understand. Um, uh, okay, let me grab the Russia X. We're going to do the action because when I moved to posture one, it didn't tell me to reset anything. 
Um, I guess I could look in the governing manual for posture. See if that's, it is in here. There is a section of it. Page 44, let me make sure. I don't see anything about posture on page 44. <laughs> what the heck? Posture. 44, it says. I'm on 44 and it's talking about cyber wars. Oh, come on. And then setting up a war. I see nothing so right here. Posture. It's telling me to go to page 44. So I go to 44 and it's on cyber war or setting up a war. It has nothing to do with posture. So I'm trying to go back a few pages. Maybe it's, you know, Somehow wrong. Uh, I don't see anything. Come on, rogue states, terror groups, conflict tracks. There we go, page 32. Posture. So let's take a look. Normal level two reflects an increased aggressiveness. If posture was two and changes back to one, the crisis shit for that country remains in the cup until it's drawn and resolved, at which point it would be returned to the draw cup. Why would it be returned to the draw cup? That makes no sense. So it's just saying that it's forever there? The pier acts, crisis chip remains in the cup until it is drawn and resolved, at which point it is returned to the draw cup. I think it means to tell me that it's going to return to the, to the board. I think that's a typo. Has to be. Otherwise, this is the long, most long-winded way of saying it's just there forever. Um... It's even trying to thematically explain what's going on. It says, at, even though they're at a lower posture, that peer's a country's aggressiveness remains until you draw that chit. So I, I'm going to assume that that's the correct interpretation, that this is one of those typos. Um, so yeah, Russia acts. Yay, team. So if we open this up, there was right here, um, if it's part of the crisis chit, they're going to do cyber attacks, and they're going to make two of them. They're going to roll a d10 and select another random action from the 1 to 10 list of remaining actions below. If we roll a 1, uh, re-roll again, because it can't be cyber yet again. So if we go, we're going to jump ahead until we get to the cyber attacks, which is here. I know it's a little off camera, but this is that thing we're going to roll again. So here's the first attack. It's against number 3, which is... U.S. political cohesion. They did this before. Now we're going to roll again. And I rolled a two, which is a major success. So we're getting clobbered. So political cohesion, major success. Decrease relation with Congress by one. 
and bipartisan cooperation by one box. It's already as low as it can go. You must also randomly discard one congressional friend. <sighs> All right, so we lose one of our congressional friends. So I got these two uh, left. One to three, four, five, six. So we rolled a five, so we lost Hugo Torres. We do keep the media relations, I guess, but uh, all right, that was one, two, seven, U.S. relationship with European allies. And they rolled a seven, which is a success. Um, decrease the NATO ally relationship by one level. All right. We went from very close to close. I don't like that. The, these cyber attacks are killing us. We got to improve our cyber. Because uh, if we improve our cyber and we have more cyber than them, I mean, yeah, they can still succeed, but we're bumping them out of the major success, which has uh, been killing us. Um, okay, so that was two, and then we got to do a random action. So I rolled a one, which is a cyber attack. So we've got to roll again. And now I rolled a two. So the two is initiate multi-domain, low-intensity gray zone attacks. So is there a region that has three or more Russian influence? No, because they already have a base somewhere. Expand influence. Make one roll, uh, see below, on the first region specified by the following conditions. So... Rush. So is there zero to one in and no base in Eastern Europe? This is not true. They have a base. Is there two Russian influence counters and no base in Eastern Europe? Okay, that's not true. Is there less than three influence counters and no base in Eurozone? That is true. So they're going to try to do this and they're going to make a roll on the first region specified by the following conditions. So they rolled a one, which is not good for us. Uh, what's the roll for? So right here, place one influence. That's not it. Make one roll. I don't understand. Make one roll for what? This I understand. Make a roll. One. Bold D10, add the selected regions U.S. and add the regional alignment, I see. On a result of 10 or less, place one Russia influence counter on the region. I see, I see. That's the roll. So I rolled a one, which means they're going to place a region influence. Okay. Sometimes it's more confusing than it needs to be. Okay, so a second Russian influence just ended up over NATO. That's typical Russia. And yeah, we're done. So the next thing we do is we're moving to the focused national intelligence step. So let's see what that does for us. All right. Um, If you have an exceptional White House resource card, no. 
National Intel Collection Table for each region that has an FNI counter. I have one region, the Middle East. Uh, the effects of our focused intel in that region. You may then move the counter to a new world region if you wish. So we're going to roll a d10. A 2 is low, which should be good. Effects on terrorism. Move a level 3, 2, 1 terror group into the targeting box. Okay, let's do that first. So right now we have all twos. So we're going to move one of them into the targeting box. So that means it's skip gathering and locating. That's, that's really important. That moved it all the way to the... You're in our sights, mister. Um, effects on war. Choose one. If you go to war with one of your military actions in this segment of the action phase, you receive an additional minus one surprise bonus. Or, if U.S. or ally is currently involved in a war in that region, I, I, blah, 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 Israel is, add two strength to your side in the war. Intel provides timely operational advantages. Or, if there's a civil war, which there's that too, you may choose to share intel with the U.N. in order to get them to intervene. Make an immediate broker peace talks role in the U.N. for the chosen civil war with an overall DM, DRM of minus two. So, I don't think Israel needs two points from us. They're already up 10 to 3. Although 12 to 3 would give them 4 to 1 instead of right now they're 3 to 1. Um, I'm going to not help Israel here. And we're going to deal with the civil wars because there's two of them. And there's one that Iran's influencing and we're going to go after that one. So we're going to do a DRM of minus 2 on the WM4 in the world charts. WM4 is page 15. Civil War Resolution. So let me just roll. I rolled a, a 9, which is not going to be helpful. Um, minus 1 if you in action or if you spent an AP. No. Minus 2. Nope. Plus one, if regional stability is less than five, so that's now a 10. Plus one, if there's Iranian influence, that makes it an 11. And then I reduced it to a nine because of my, um, my situation. So a nine is fighting intensifies. <sighs> Increase regional crisis by one box. <laughs> this was a complete backfire. Um, okay. That did not help us, not even in the slightest. All right, so we made our choice. Uh, what kind of jerk are you? Um, so do I keep? Um, and technically we had some DRMs here. Uh, Russia would have added a plus one to our role, which would have moved us into three. But we... Um, We had a minus one, so this would have canceled out. So we were fine. Um, I'm keeping it right there. The Middle East is a pressure pot, so we need to keep the intel there. Um, we do have our own war with um, the Taliban. That I can see how getting us two more points would be helpful because right now we're tied four four. Um, but uh, I'm going to stay in the Middle East for now. Okay, so now we move to the next action which is, and we're an hour and 44 minutes. We are now any four diplomatic and or military actions. And oh boy, do I want to do a bunch. Um, there was something Russia did to us with the cyber war. So we can try to like remove their influence from the Eurozone. Uh, our stability and stuff is at six, so I don't think it's high enough yet. Um, how many do we get? Four. That's a lot of actions. So I think first thing I want to do 
is domestically, I want to improve relations with Congress. So I am going to spend an action point. So we go into nine to give us a minus one, and I rolled a seven. So I get a minus one here, which gives us a six. Uh, I took us down to a five. Well, this one uh, gave us a six. I brought it down to a five. And we're on the four, so this goes back up to six. And a six or higher is minus one. We bungled and made things worse. Oh, boy. Um... Nope, I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to spend an AP to roll again. And this time, I rolled a 2. And I do get a minus 1 because I paid the AP. Uh, I actually get a minus 2, and that's a plus 1. So not only do we get to improve it, but we get to add a friend. So we add 1, and we draw and place one new friend in Congress, if your party relations allow. So we now move the... The relationship up to five and we get a friend that's what i wanted we got to pass these bills folks <laughs> and you need friends so here we go and it is sarah riley uh, another radical so but she has a media of two which is going to be very helpful so put her up there, call it done. Um, all right, so that was one of our four. I know that was an expensive one to do, but um, I wanted to do that. I can stimulate our economy, which probably should get done. We need to get the bipartisanship up in Congress. That costs an AP to do, and the chances of success are really low. I just don't like how low the success chance is. That's my problem with that action. Um, so let's look at our military ones because we have a lot of military things going on as well. Three more actions. We can do this. With a region with a civil war, we can get some trending pro-U.S. counters and get some goodwill going, potentially. Potentially. Uh, we can do arm sales, which is a funny one. Add one strength to an ally. Direct intel gathering ops against two different terror groups. We can gain intel. And then for each group, we can roll... Put them in the gathering box. We're going to move it one box to the right. We can perform a raid or a strike on a terror group, which destroys or diminishes the terror group. Special forces raid on a terror group in a region. It must be in the target fixed box. Uh, in the intel track, roll in the SOF raid table. Perform up to two drone strikes. And we can roll in the... I don't know what the difference is. Like, why would I do one versus the other? Um, I do want to do this, so... So uh, Israel put a terror group over here on the right. So it's in the targeting zone. So you can see it's up there. And it's a level two terror group. So we want to raid it. Um, I'm going to do one or the other. It's They're both WM2. Uh, we have special forces in the area. And we have drones. So I don't know if one's any better than the other. But let's take a look. Page nine. Okay, so we have an SOF raid table here and a drone strike here. So um, 
Here you can see a strike is effective, but causes casualties on a five to six. And uh, we can create problems if we roll an eight or higher. And there's uh, plus one if there's no US Air Force, we do have one. Is there three or more China or Russian influence? Nope. Minus one would be applied here. We'd get another minus one because we're focused and we'd get another minus one. So we'd get minus three to this roll. Now over here on this side, we got a success up to a three to five and then success with casualties uh, decreases the terror group by one level. Um, and a failure with many casualties causes public approval to drop. This one gets a minus one if there's both, which there is. And a minus one here, which there is. That doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. No. No. So we would get a minus two to this, and I think we get a minus two to either way. So the drone strike is actually a little better odds. No, no, the drone strike causes casualties at a five or a six, whereas we would not have casualties until we get a six if we send in a strike team. All right, we're going to send in a strike team. So let me zoom it out. Roll the dice. Lower number is always better. Oh my gosh, we roll a one. All that obsessing over nothing. So, uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's a, uh, you got to read this. So uh, we do get to do a minus two, right? So that puts it to negative one. So if it says zero or less, look at this. We got him. <laughs> There's Osama bin Laden there. High value terror leader killed, survivors scatter. Decrease terror group by two levels, which means it's destroyed. Move terror group to the gathering box on the intel track. Um, plus three public approval. So first of all, let's get rid of the terror group. So a level two terror group is gone. We get plus three public approval. So 46, 48, we're back up to 50. Plus one legacy point. That puts us up to six. Use captured intel to make an immediate intel against another terror group in the region. Then choose. We can get an action point or minus one to regional crisis. Well, I'm going to just put another terror group in the gathering intel. And I'm going to choose minus one to regional crisis. So that is done. That was a really good move. Okay, so we uh, that's second action. We have a third action. So we could do this to move the one we just found to the right. Um, if I get a one to a four, I move it to the right. Otherwise, there's no effect. I do have the national intelligence counter here, and I have US intel, so I would get a minus two to my roll. So this is a one to a six. And I could select two terror groups for each group. I can put them on the board. Um, is there anything I can do to actually help with my war? All right, we're going to do uh, Middle East. Uh, use military professionals to treat disease, build schools, blah, 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 blah. Because um, our alignment with the region is really poor. So we need to improve that. And so it's going to cost us one action. Uh, it has to have a war or civil war. They got two of them. And we've been at war during the turn. So we're going to war. So we meet both of those conditions. 
Uh, well, actually, no, we're not at war in that region. So anyways, getting back to point here. So we got we need a one or a two. Uh, plus one, if there's a Chinese or Russia encounter, there is. But we get to reduce our military rating, which is a one. So these two cancel out. The problem is, is um, this is only, this is like awesome results. But even a three or a four is still decent. Um, five to seven is, I'm sorry, five to seven still does something. And then ten makes it worse. So let's try it. Um, here we go. I rolled a four, so a four is perfect. These two cancel, so we get a um, trending pro U.S. counter in the region, uh, or receive a U.N. goodwill. I I don't know which one. I would rather have the trending pro, so let's do that. So we come over here, and get a trending pro. It goes there, so the alignment, which is at a four is now going to possibly go up. And um, then it says minus one to regional crisis. And so we remove it down to a zero. And then uh, for my last action, I'm gonna do it again, because uh, I like this one. So we're gonna go again, and I rolled a four again, which is fantastic. So now we cause this to go up to a five, which is what we wanted. And then, because we're at zero, we get to remove a military footprint. So that gets rid of some of the uh, turmoil in the region. Okay, that's our four actions. I um, I never know if I make the right choices. It just feels right at the time. And then uh, that brings us to the end, and we're moving to activation phase two, which will be the next video. Holy cow, that was two hours to get through activation phase one. I do agree with people that it'll go smoother once I get more familiarity, but I'm telling you, some of this is like, like what's going to end up happening is I'm going to think I remember what I need to do, and then I'm going to miss steps. So anyways, the, the biggest issue I'm dealing with right now is I have to work tomorrow, so I'm running out of time. And my mouth is very dry because I'm doing a lot of talking. But am I having fun? I, answer is yes, I am. I actually... I, I, I desperately wish one of my kids would play this with me because I think between the two of us, like I think this is more fun to play with somebody. Even though it's there's only one of us making decisions, it'd be nice to like have somebody to bounce ideas off of or let them read a chart and I can be looking at the table and moving stuff around. Um, I actually would like somebody to play this with. Um, but it is what it is for a solo game. Uh, I, I, I am happy to have this on my... On my shelf I it's not my kind of game but yet it's still fun and uh, you know and just to put you in perspective let's talk about relativity because everything's relative I don't like picket duty I don't like uh, what is it b17 Queen of the skies I don't like uh, I can't remember what it's called but it's one of those there's several series of of submarine games and you know you you roll a die you see what you know, what part of the Atlantic Ocean you're going to. You roll a die to see if your torpedo is a dud. You roll another die to see if your torpedo actually hits. You know, I'm not a fan of those games at all. I totally understand. Like, I've even watched people do videos where they're saying an awesome narrative, right? They're, they're um, you know, telling a story. They give names to all their crew. I totally get it because you're immersing yourself in the story it's not my thing. It's not fun to me, largely because the decisions that you make are pointless. Ah, uh, I found a ship. Oh, do I identify it or not? Oh, I guess I didn't. Sorry. You know, okay, I'm going to shoot at this ship. Do I hit it or not? Oh, okay. Um, those aren't like deep. So anyways, I don't mean to complain so much about those other games, but this game, I'm making serious choices. I get to make domestic or military actions. I chose one domestic and, what was it, three military. And I could have chosen four domestic. Like, the point is, is there was a lot of choice. And I don't know if I made the right ones. And I um, I keep convincing myself that I focus on the Middle East enough, I'm going to clean it up. And to be quite honest, the Middle East is worse than it was before we started this game. And... Uh, 
So, you know, maybe I'm wasting my time in the Middle East. Maybe that's the lesson to be learned here, <laughs> is that they are a waste of your time. And, um, uh, you know, if I focus domestically, maybe I can get some of these bills passed. I, it's, it's so hard for me to know. And that's, I think, why I like this. Yes, this is, did my torpedo hit? It still has all that element to it. But kudos to the designers. They're giving me meaningful choices. And that's the word, meaningful choices. I am making meaningful choices in this game. I mean, I roll my die and it doesn't turn out the way I like. I do have a mitigation factor where I can roll it again if I'm willing to spend AP points most of the time. Um, you know, some of the things that are happening to me, I'm not very pleased with, but it is what it is. So anyways, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Stay awesome.